yeah. who can't read. I think that this is a chance to, for one thing, to get out that damn congressional web that they've woven. Well, that's all on the on the current side of the moment. There are there are two or three other subjects that they're going into. They're going into things like uh, uh, all the, uh, the the chain of command, uh, whether uh, too many headquarters, whether we have too many commitments. Uh, Nunn's article this morning that uh, we have too many commitments and uh, we should uh, trim our strategy to fit our resources, uh, which is of course quite impossible because we got to set our strategy to fit the threat, not not uh, not our resources. But all of that. I think that we are get our trademark on that. Well, we ought to raise a bottle of champagne over the cider here or something because this is the first meeting of the domestic council. And I've uh, wondered too if now we shouldn't have uh, the label put on the paperwork that uh, no one improved. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is the first meeting, uh, as you mentioned, and uh, we're looking forward to this council uh, handling a, a wide range of policy initiatives. Uh, one of the things that uh, will characterize the work of the council is its versatility, uh, since we deal with everything from federalism to management and administration, energy, environment, natural resources, health, education, public assistance, privatization, regulatory reform, and legal issues. So, There'll be a lot of things uh, that will be uh, coming our way for this council. Uh, today, our specific uh, topic that we're dealing with is a management and administration issue, and it, it has to do with the follow-on. If you remember, we had a meeting of the Cabinet Council on Management and Administration with you, in which we talked about a number of management initiatives. Today, legislative purposes, and uh, Joe Wright has a presentation to make uh, which will describe the legislation we propose to be set up. This was probably the, the most massive management legislative package that's been developed uh, at least since the Hoover Commission in 1950. So uh, I'll turn it over to Joe. Okay, before you. Okay, Mr. President, this is a uh, follow up on the discussion that we had, if you remember, the first part of the year. And at the front of the briefing books that we handed out, we stated that. What you had done is ask the, at that time, the Cabinet Council of Management and Administration to go and come back and flush out what those legislative initiatives were and come up with something that during the second term could be a very positive, disciplined approach that's institutionalized on improving management of the federal government. And this is what the Joint Task Force has come up with. Uh, it's something that you can relax. It's nice to have good news for a while. At one of these sessions, this is a good news presentation, and uh, I want to show you what they hope you came up with. We're going to need the lights down a little bit. Mr. President, I'm just, just thanking these gentlemen for their support of the tax reform proposal, and uh, some of them have already testified this morning as we discussed uh, in the leadership meeting, and I just got to the point that I was going to tell them that. Uh, we were, as we discussed in the meeting with the, the, the Republican congressional leadership this morning, we're pleased with the uh, initial response we've received to the proposal. We're pleased with the launch. We're uh, particularly uh, uh, pleased with the fact that we think we've got pretty strong bipartisan support, and without it, we're not going to have tax reform. I don't think that we're, uh, we're naive in the, in the sense of underestimating the magnitude of the job ahead, because it's going to be substantial, uh, particularly as uh, people uh, isolate a particular provision and zero in on it, and we anticipate that there'll be a lot there'll be a lot of that. Unlike some of the other initiatives that the President has undertaken, this isn't something that's going to move in, a, in, a, in the space of 30 to 60 days. It's going to, because of the magnitude of the job, there's going to be an extended period here where we go into a hearing process. But the President's already been out on the road supporting the proposal. He's going back out on the road uh, this week. And um, we're, we'll have a period there with a great deal of visibility and attention. Then we'll go into the hearing process. And then as we move out of the hearings and into markup in September and October, we fully expect to see a substantial increase then in the, uh, in the visibility of the, uh, of the proposal. I think. Uh, it's also commentators and critics of planning 
if you've got a provision you want to change, uh, come on in and let us hear from you. Let's hear from you during the course of the legislative project. Process, but we're interested in keeping the maximum rate and no, seeing that rise no higher than 35%, and we're interested in revenue neutrality. So if you've got to add to what Jim has said, just said, I know that you've been up on the hill testifying, <coughs> and I'd like to add my thanks uh, and my thanks for your coming down here. The, uh, you know, it's uh, probably time that. Uh, Maybe you haven't had time to study our tax reform proposal, but I'm sure you have familiarized yourself to quite an extent with it. It isn't perfect, as Jim said, but we believe that it'll work and that we can surpass it. And uh, we also, I add to that, having been out on the uh, road for a few days, in addition to the polls that we have seen, the people obviously uh, do support this, and I'll be on my way again tomorrow morning. We all know the shortcomings of the present system. It's unfair. It's um, hindered technological investment. It impedes economic growth. It does all the things that uh, we've been blaming it for. You supported our efforts in 81 when we reduced taxes. And while we didn't reverse the spending increase of government, at least we cut back on the rate of increase in spending. And certainly, we reduced considerably the paperwork and the regulations that government was imposing on everyone. And the results uh, speak for themselves. The, over the, over, for over, th over 30 months now, we've had the <coughs> unprecedented growth in the economy. We've had more people, a higher percentage of, of the working pool employed than at any time in our previous history. Low inflation <coughs> rates, interest rates falling and our, all our trading partners and our allies and even some of our unfriendly types out there are kind of envious of uh, what we've done. And now, thanks to your efforts, uh, maybe we'll have an opportunity to finish the job of providing and securing economic good health for, for America. But there's an army of lobbyists, maybe you saw some of them up there on the <laughs> hill, and special interests that are dug in and they're firing every weapon they own, <clears throat> but I think maybe you've shown them that there are loyal soldiers on the right side who can fire a few salvos themselves. Together we can brighten the future for our children and our grandchildren, and I'm glad and proud that the American business community has some statesmen like yourselves who are ready to come up here and do what you've done in, in support of this. And now, as I said, I'm I'm supposed to leave you and turn you back over to Jim and to Don Reagan and, and discuss some other specific provisions that directly concern you. And again, I'll say thanks to you for coming down here. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mr. President, some of the 1981 uh, tax proposals which you just talked about are repealed in this new uh, proposal. Uh, how do you uh, justify that? Well, I think that that would simply mean that um, we did what we could in the, at that particular time, knowing that there was more really that should be done, and this just shows that we're continuing to improve. How are you going to say that? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you Sometimes I answer, sometimes 